to dot or not to dot? That is the question. Okay, that's a very terrible Kenneth Branagh. Hello and welcome back to the Fullerton College pre-press class. This is Professor Ben Hewitt, who is not a Shakespearean actor at all. Anyways, we're talking about proofing, and right now we're on the question of dots. How important is it to show the halftone dots of the finished pr uh, print on a proof? How much does your client need to see that level of precision and that level of prediction for what they're going to get? Well, like everything else, it's a gray area. Pun intended. Get it? Half tones, grays. Anyways, let's move on. So half tone dots on proofs can show moray patterns and complex trapping. They can show you what does the actual dots look like when printed. And sometimes the morays, which is the interference pattern, those are the overlays of the dots, can make some images not look so great. And some clients really care about that level of detail of what the moray is gonna look like and how good are the rosettes and what exactly is gonna happen. Does that field of light blue look good or does the, uh, the pattern of the dots distract from the color it's trying to be? Those are the kinds of questions we're looking at here. So there's a comfort level of this, especially for picky clients who will pull you apart and try to nickel and dime later to say, oh my gosh, it's not exactly what I thought it was going to be. The dots will be precisely the same as the ones the plate makers are going to make. It uses the same grid of machine pixels and the same laser spots, producing the same halftone dots of the same precision as your plate maker. So you know that you're not gonna to have to explain it to your client as to why it doesn't look exactly the same. Not everyone is that picky because there are disadvantages too. Obviously they cost more. Inkjet proofs, even though they're not as good, are definitely taking over as the way to do things because they are cheaper and easier and faster. Ablative proofs take four times as long to make because they're not just dropping ink out of an ink head. Oh no, there's a laser ablating halftone dots. It takes as long as making four plates to do one of these because it has to print it four times. It has to, you have to load up the donor sheets and then it has to print the cyan, print the magenta, print the yellow, print the black, one after the other, micron by micron across the whole page. So compared to an inkjet proof, it's much slower. And then in overall, you have to be able to choose a proofing system based off of your client's color tolerances. How close does it have to be to convince them that it's good to print? And how mad will they be if it's not precisely what they saw? You'll have to understand your own clients. There can be a learning curve and there can be some uh, hurt feelings along the way, sometimes getting to know them. But once you know your clients, you know which ones need special care and which ones are like, ah, it's cool, man. Just make sure everything's spelled right because there are both kinds. So pay attention to your clients. Remember, this isn't just some sort of thing where you're in a dark box and you're getting instructions from like some magical piece of paper that appears on your desk. Typically, you have a relationship with your clients. Your company knows your people who come in. You talk to them, you see them, you know what their personalities are, you know how to make them happy, what they're willing to accept and what they're not. It's not, it's not a hard and set rule. It's definitely down from person to person. And what types of experiences have they had with you and with other printers? Sometimes they'll be far more skeptical and far more worried about being taken advantage of. And others will be more trusting saying, I know you're an expert and you're gonna do a good job. So it depends on the person and what their experiences are. Uh, it's our job to adapt to who we're working with and make sure we take good care of them. Now let's talk about soft proofing, which is something that I'm not totally comfortable with all the way. Uh, but that's that's my personal preference. And uh, well, you know what? You're in my class. I get to, what's the word? Force my personal preferences on you and then grade you on how well you know my personal preferences. So what's better, chocolate chip cookies or oatmeal raisin? This will be on the final exam. Anyway, so soft proofing. Soft proofing relies on LCD display. Soft proofing means they're gonna look at it on their computer screen. Let me add an extra word to this that didn't used to be there, hopefully. Soft proofing has actually, for me, fallen farther from what I want to see with the advent of mobile cell phone and tablet technologies. Because oftentimes those are not very well color managed. And also I have noticed personally that there have been a lot of problems 
with PDF readers on cell phones not showing them properly. Dropping images, moving things around, changing colors. Some of those things are not interpreting PDFs and they are losing out on some of the reasons I love the PDF. PDF on a cell phone is not the same as a PDF on a computer. And until it is, soft proofing is a little bit dangerous there. Anyways, remote soft proofing means they're gonna use a digital monitor at their own site. Soft, proof, soft proofing covers all types of monitor based. Now the best, well, we'll talk about this before we get into it. So the digital pre, <coughs> excuse me, the digital pre-press workflow, you start by designing and you capture images and correct them to make them work. Then you show the client a proof and they either approve it down to computer to plate, we're gonna get ready to print, or they will, you know, say, actually, I was kind of hoping for, and then you're back to the design phase again, redoing, refixing, revising, and then sending it back to them again. With a hard proofing cycle, you have to make the hard proof. And then they have to be sent to the client or the client has to come to visit you. And the client has to look at them. And sometimes it takes a day. Sometimes you're waiting for the client to show their boss and they have to show their boss and they have to show their boss. And finally, they have to show their spouse who's the one with the real decision-making power. You think I'm kidding, I've seen this happen. And then they'll write up their comments, what they want changed, what's okay, what's not, and they'll mail it back to you or bring it back to your office, spending another day. And then the pre-press makes their corrections and then you send it back to them again. And it can take days or weeks to proof and produce and get the approval to print out a project. Obviously not all clients are this picky or this slow, but it has happened and I've experienced it. You can get lost in this weird groundhog day cycle of proofing, correcting, and proofing and correcting, and it can take forever with some clients who are very particular, especially if they're particular and they don't know what they want. Now, a soft proofing cycle is much quicker. You can do it in minutes or hours because you just load it in the soft proofing system. There's no need to ship it back and forth or have someone drive it out to your office. You just send it to them by email or through another online means. They look at it, they annotate online and send it right back. And they can make all the changes they want but at least it's not spending all that extra time. Soft proofing is commonly used by printers. Yep, that's us. By pre-press service bureaus, because there are, by the way, companies that do nothing but pre-press. They have no printing of them on their own in-house. They simply take files, process them, and send them off to other people to produce them. Publishers like soft proofing and advertising agencies like soft proofing. And advertising agencies also use soft proofing. Sorry, I had to stop for a second there. If I had to repeat anything, apologies. Um, I'm sure that's not a glitch in the matrix. It's probably just me making a mistake. Continue to live your lives. Okay, so types of remote soft proofing. The first one on the left is by far the most common. And actually, I quite like it for the most part. As long as people are mostly just using it for content and not for color accuracy, it works great. It's called mail your client a PDF. It uses existing systems that everybody already has and doesn't cost any extra money to anybody. You take an email, you write an email, you attach a PDF proof and you send it over. The downside is you can't necessarily color manage it. Sometimes you need to send a lower quality proof to make it get through the uh, size limits of emails as an attachment. You can't send full quality and yeah, you don't know what their other end's gonna be. They may or may not look at it on a computer. Um, I used to have problems back when I was in, in, in the industry, uh, even with my own uh, supervisor, my own boss, uh, who is a good guy. Again, I have nothing bad to say about him, <laughs> really, actually. Uh, but he had some issues. We had some issues where he'd look at them on the road because he's always meeting with clients. He was also our principal sales guy in the, in the company. Probably the only loyal salesman I've ever known. No offense, salespeople. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Uh, he would be looking at them, hopefully not while driving, although sometimes I suspect he may have, on his cell phone, on his iPhone. He'd look at proofs. And color on a cell phone is different than a managed color, a color managed computer's monitor, because color, cell phone, everything is color managed. You don't have to worry about that. However, cell phones are optimized to show very vibrant RGB photography. I mean, iPhones are sold on the ability to share beautiful pictures with each other that you take on the iPhone. It's kind of a closed circuit there. Uh, at least they wish it was. Uh, they didn't really want 
competition. Oh, well, everyone has smartphones now. But anyway, smartphones, whether they're Apple or not, are all designed to show these pictures really well. So your Instagram looks amazing and your friend's pictures of their vacation looks amazing. And that influencer is showing you that fashion trend they want you to sign up for an MLM and buy from. It looks amazing, but they don't necessarily print correctly. And they most definitely don't match CMYK outputs because they're pumped up to show a certain thing. They are idealized for and um, kind of min-maxed, uh, optimized, there's the word, sorry, took me a minute. They're optimized for use specifically of viewing pictures on them. Now that color management comes at a cost of if you send a CMYK based proof somewhere over, uh, you know, into a mobile network and they start looking at it on a tablet or a cell phone, the colors are all gonna be wildly wrong. Not a little wrong, but like really, really wrong. So that can be a problem. There's also content only systems, which is a less expensive, easy to use thing doesn't take extra software, but it's not color accurate. It's only for content proofs. Again, the question of, did you spell it all right? Is it all on the correct page? Do you like those pictures? Not in the, do you like the color of those pictures, but are the pictures themselves correct and in the right place? That works. And lastly, you have the color accurate systems, which are more expensive and they require special hardware, special software, but the color is actually accurate and controlled. So you can then proof softly across the country, around the world, and someone can see an accurate representation of what they're going to get on their computer monitor. Really, really cool if you get to use it. Rather rare. I have in my now many years, multiple decades in printing, not ever seen one of these in action, sadly. Would have been fun. But uh, I always worked for smaller companies and we never had access to these higher end equipments that cost more money. We were always working on shoestrings and making ends meet as best we could. So to do this, to do software thing, you have to host it. You need a ASP, an application service provider. And that means a server on the internet that hosts your proofing software. You can subscribe to these services and you need to make sure that you're getting how much you need they have subscription plans based off of how often you're gonna do this. The customer doesn't need to pay for it, although technically they will, but you just roll it into the cost of the print job, right? Anyways. There's also these server-based ones, which are in the print shop. You have your own hardware in your shop that hosts the server that they log into. That also does some good things. It means all the content stays in the wall, the print shop, which is secure. Um, remember one of those things they say about social media, but it, it counts for other things as well. I'll say it once, then you say it the second time with me. There's only one internet. Okay, all together now. There's only one internet. There's no secret internet that only houses your stuff that only you and your friends see. You put pictures of yourself at a party doing things you shouldn't. Well, guess what? The entire world of the computer connection has a way to find those pictures. They are not hidden. That also means anything you have on a computer that's connected to a network can be accessible by anyone in the world who's good enough with their computer. If you're using somebody else's service somewhere else to host your files, your client's print files are now at the mercy of anyone on the internet who wants to look at them. This can be a problem if they contain company secrets or if they are not yet published. If they are, let's say, pricing for an upcoming product and a catalog and the competitor gets a hold of this and they can then undercut the price and beat and compete harder against them, you could be inadvertently ruining your, co your customer's business by not having good enough security on their files. Some files require you to sign an NDA, non-disclosure agreement, that you're not going to share any information you know about this until it's published or ever, uh, depending on what's being printed. So hosting your own is more secure. But again, then you now have to front the cost of buying that software and buying the hardware and maintaining the internet connection for it to happen. We're going to pause here and come back for one last video. Uh, I think this will be a three video series. Uh, so we'll soft here, soft, <laughs> we'll stop here with soft proofing and start back up on another one. Talk to you soon.